with anti-children and bought it on uh, something beyond anti-children by the last comedian, who, again, I said, he thought it was very funny, said, I always wanted a child, but I couldn't catch one. I, this is being run by Showtime. Now, who runs Showtime? Who was, the th who was the creature that runs Showtime? How come you never see a conservative comedian on any of these channels? How come the sick degenerates who run HBO and Showtime only have degenerate leftists like Bill Maher and the others with stage or stooge audiences? Bill Maher is nothing but a government uh, 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 jester. They work for the government. I don't mean they get a check from the government. They're approved by the government. Anybody who d debases Judeo-Christian values, anyone who debases the family, anyone who runs down the church, anyone who runs down decent, a decent life is considered a comedian to them. I had a female comedian up who was the most anti-female comedian I've ever heard in my life. And she said, well, you know, I, on the long drive down here, I, you know, you know what you have to do, take a lot of coke. and <laughs> Like, that's the norm now. Just take a lot of coke and get up there and, sh and spritz. But anyway, I, I watched it because I can't believe it. See, it's, I'm a social observer. So if I watch the society degenerating so rapidly under Obama, it's all interconnected. You say, what, what do you want from him? He had nothing to do with Showtime. Are you kidding? Who do you think pays for the Democrats? Who gives them money? The media. The government media complex is one and the same. Otherwise, there'd be a reaction somewhere to what I saw. Then there was Sean Penn giving an interview to this, this man named Charlie Rose. And I don't know what Charlie Rose thinks he is, but of course he's just a stooge again for his guests. And Rose the stooge asks uh, Penn if he thinks the Mexican government set him up. Listen to this crazy, because I always thought that there's more to this Penn story. He wouldn't be alive if he wasn't working for the CIA. I personally think Sean Penn, my guess, no way to know, no way to confirm or deny, pure speculation, in my opinion, Sean Penn works for the federal government. Listen to clip number 15. Do you believe that the Mexican government released this because they wanted to see you blamed and to put you at risk? Yes. They wanted to encourage the cartel to put you in their crosshairs? Yes. Are you fearful for your life? No. Do you believe the cartel wants <laughs> to do Wait, are you, harm you, to you? Did you no, he's not afraid. He's the only man, not a, only man in the world not afraid of the cartel. That's because he's Superman. Sean Penn's Superman. Underneath that outfit of skinny jeans, he's made of steel. The man of steel with kryptonite. Uh, did you hear you said, no, I'm not afraid of the cartel. Do you know any, any other man on earth who would say that who's sane? No one on earth would say that. No sane man would say a thing like that. Okay, but that again, I'm telling you, there's something more to this than meets the eye. Because if they wanted him, my friends, he'd be fearful for his life. He'd go into hiding, number two. Whatever. I mean, come on. It's all propaganda. Bob, on WABC, you saw the Andrew Dice Clay psycho fest against women and children? Yes, I did. I watched it for about four minutes and turned it off. I thought it was going to be a comedy routine, and it was absolutely disgusting. Well, it got worse, though. Every, every so-called comedian became more anti-woman by the second. And about their anatomy, body parts, what, I, I can't say it, it's a family show. I mean, if you want sickness, turn on Andrew Dice Clay. And that's why, I, I think that that's why Howard Stern likes him. I would think, because birds of a feather flock together. It was, it was incredible. I couldn't believe they had it on TV. Well, that's Showtime for you. Who runs Showtime? Who's the head of Showtime? Who's the genius? Okay, whatever. I'm just giving you an example. When I say borders, language, and culture, I'm talking about this. This is the culture I'm talking about. Get it? WVLK, Travis, fire away 30 seconds or less. Boom, go. Yeah, Mr. Savage, I just wanted to say that uh, when black people say that they want equal rights, it's not that they want equal rights. It's that they want divided rights. They want to be judged by a black lawyer. They want to be judged by a black prosecutor. And that's because they want to have an easier sit you know, the, the judicial system would have. So does that mean that if you want, let's say, a jury of your peers, that white people should demand an all-white jury, feeling that black people will be biased against them? Is that what we want? A Hispanic jury for Hispanics, a black jury for blacks, and a white jury for whites? Is that what they want now? Uh, a polarization like that? Because that's where we're heading. See, this is what I want to do now. When I call your name, don't say, how are you? I love you. I love Teddy, whatever. Just bing, bang, boom, 30 seconds or less, right? WMAL, Sarah, go ahead. You're on the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? And you're dry 
Clay used to talk like this, and then to make money, he had to drop the whole thing. The woman from Saturday Night Live refused to be on when he was going to be on. She got fired for not wanting to be on with this creep. Then they tried to lighten him up for a TV show and said he's not like that. No dice. Don't worry. And then he came back to this to make money. He'll do anything for money. Well, now I know why Woody Allen picked him to play in his movie uh, uh, Blue Jasmine. I mean, Woody Allen married, what, a nine-year-old? So I would say that, that uh, they fit together. They probably got a nice dinner at some point in Elaine's when it was still open. And he found someone who uh, was like him but bigger and stronger and braver, and he put him in his movie. But, Sarah, it was this, did you see this show? Did I see the film? No, no, and I wouldn't. I wouldn't. No, 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 no. Did you see the Andrew Dice Clay Blue show on Showtime? It's disgusting. Why do we have men hate women? Why do men hate the vessel from which... And then the, the audience consisted of, fe you know, actors and actresses who would laugh at the jokes, mainly women. Like you'd make a, a joke about how small Asian men's um, private parts are, and they the camera would focus in on an Asian who was laughing hysterically, right? And then he, then another comedian would make a joke about how uh, Asian women sound when they're climaxing. And they'd make sounds like that, and they'd focus on an Asian woman laughing in the audience. You understand the whole thing was a setup? Yes. It's sickening. I mean, I watched it because it's a social meltdown to see how low this is. We have gone below that level, way beyond the level of the Weimar Republic before Hitler came to power. Back in a minute. There needs to be a concerted effort to address the systemic racism in our criminal justice system. And that requires a very clear agenda for retraining police officers, looking at ways to end racial profiling, finding more ways to really bring the disparities that stalk our country into high relief. So here she is racially profiling police under the guise of not racially profiling police. And watching the debate last night was watching Mr. Marx debating Mrs. Lennon. One uh, socialist, communist debating another. Anti-white bigotry pouring out of their mouths. Coming from the white ruling class. As I said on this day, Martin Luther King Jr. Day, we've gone from I have a dream to I have a scheme. It's sickening to have watched this. But... This is what we've gotten used to with the Democrat Party. And that's why those of us on the other side of the aisle, so to speak, must be very cautious in attacking candidates who might just win. And there's a lot of foolish people on the conservative side who think that by attacking Donald Trump saying he's not conservative enough, they're going to catapult Ted Cruz to the presidency. Ted Cruz cannot win the presidency. Ted Cruz has too many defects. Uh, as a candidate, not as a man, to win. Trump can win. And what they're doing right now is working for the RNC by undermining Trump under the guise of supporting Ted Cruz. They're working for the Republican National Committee. The very same people who say they're anti-Republican are working for the Republican Party by attacking Donald Trump because he's not conservative enough for the Pope's and the Cardinals of conservatism. The purists remember this. Would you rather win or lose? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Blue Monday, I'm a high blue Monday. Got to work, lag a sleeve on me. He'll come to the it is hour number three of the Savage Nation. We're going to go to open mic to mic. If uh, we we have three open lines, eight five five four zero seven two eight two. If you are on the line holding, I will get to you. If you'd like to join the conversation, that's the phone number to call eight five five four hundred seven two eight two. 
We began today about the demagoguery of last night's alleged Democrat debate, which was a Potemkin debate. And then we talked about what is going on in America, the race warfare, the class warfare under Obama, and how it will get worse under Hillary or, God forbid, Bernie, Bernie, Bernie uh, Sanders. We talked about a group of youths who jumped a white couple in a knockout-style game on the Washington, D.C. Metro. We quoted a female professor of the Quran who says Allah allows Muslims to rape non-Muslim women. Go, go read it. It's on Jihad Watch. Take a look at the doll stuffing her face with a knish. Uh, I don't understand how you, because someone wears a holy robe, you accept what they say. You know what amazes me? The American left constantly mock Christians who were liars. The fake pastors, the crybaby pastors who were ripping off the congregations. They don't say one thing about these phonies who put a headscarf on and spew this kind of hatred. What would you expect? And you and uh, Cameron in England says that uh, immigrants must learn English if they're to remain in England. Schwab says your Europe will be facing a crisis with possibly a billion Africans new, moving north because of the collapse of oil prices. I told you that's why you must slam our daughters shut. Daughters, <laughs> slam our borders shut. Story of a liberal man who died in San Francisco who was punched standing on a curb. I told you there was a eulogy to some communist in, in North Beach last night by other communists of whom he was a member of their circle. And the irony and the, sa the sadness is he was a 69-year-old white guy standing on 9th and Market Street in San Francisco, and a black man came up, punched him, his head hit the curb, and he died. Horrible, just horrible. Just horrible. I don't think it'll change their policies or their rhetoric at all, by the way. And I talked about on this day how we have devolved from I have a dream to I have a scheme in one generation. How Sanders is a uh, stalking horse for Hillary to make her look centrist. How Portland Community College is calling for a month of white shaming. I said you better read Government Zero to understand what's going on. Then I said most liberals are nice people, but they don't understand the real world. I think I, maybe that's a good takeoff point right now. So Saturday morning it was raining in San Francisco. And I decided I wanted to go to a design show down at the um, former uh, military base. I forget what it's even called. I, I don't remember it. It's on the water. I don't know a point, that whatever. I don't remember some of the names of these things. But they turned it all into an art haven. Every little Quonset hut now is an art show. But there was a design show, and I wanted to go because I'm interested in design. And everyone it was full of liberals. I, I would say I was the only political conservative in the entire in the entire auditorium uh, crowd it wasn't an auditorium you walked around from exhibit to exhibit you know designers set up exhibits and sell their 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 uh, designs i guess whatever they make or they offer their design services and i find it fascinating to be in these kinds of environments because i love creativity of all kinds and i try not to look at the person's politics i want to look at their products the same with movies. If I enjoy a movie, I try to ignore the politics of the filmmaker, except in the case of Quentin Tarantino uh, and some of the others who are vocally anti-white and anti-police. I will never go to their movies. If they ever appear on a TV screen, because I know it's all monitored and calculated by Comcast, I turn the show off immediately, even if I'm just scanning through. I punish them. You can punish people like that. But, okay, so I go there. I don't know what their politics are. And I said, liberals are basically nice people. It's not mean people walking around with, you know, evil horns in their head. They look nice. They dress nice. They smell nice. They talk nice. But they're naive people. By and large, they just want to get along. They think that by being, being ultra-tolerant to everyone, everyone will be ultra-tolerant to them. But the world doesn't work that way. And they're naive. And I said, they don't understand, let alone the law of the jungle or survival of the fittest, they don't even know that their world is changing in front of their eyes. That there are people being brought into this country who have no concept of humanitarian values, humanism, liberalism. They have no idea. And so if they see a woman walking around in a tight skirt, they think that that means she's a slut and they have a right to touch her. They have no idea what they're doing to themselves. And so in that regard, I hope to educate some of them, when they occasionally tune in by accident to the show, maybe we can save the country. I don't know if it's not too late. I have no idea. Those are some of the topics. The phone number is 855 We haven't gotten to the Iran deal, but that's boring. You don't want to know about that sellout, do you? Clinton casts herself as Obama's heir. Sanders calls for revolution and debate. Amazing. 
UK Parliament sets its sights on Trump. They debated today whether to ban Trump, and they named me as one of the people banned because I'm so 